Yeah, uh, thank you for the introduction. So uh, this is joint work with uh, Benny Applebaum and Svika Borkeski. Uh, and I will talk uh, about degree two is complete for the round complexity of malicious MPC. So in multi-party computation, we have multiple parties and they have uh, private communication channels between them. And each of them has some private input. Uh, and their goal is to mutually compute some functionality f over all of their inputs in such a way that each of them only learns uh, an output without learning everything else, anything else about the inputs. Um, now, there are uh, many uh, different security notions that were defined uh, for MPC. So, for example, uh, there is the semi-honest setting where the parties uh, must follow the protocol and all they can do is just observe all of the information that they get and try to learn something out of it. And there is the malicious uh, setting where they can uh, actively uh, act differently than what they're supposed to do and uh, send arbitrary messages. Uh, and you can consider perfect security versus computational security. And there are other notions, uh, such as the threshold and whether we allow a board or not. And uh, there are also many, diff sorry, many different uh, combinations of those settings. Uh, now, you can also uh, measure uh, protocols according to their uh, efficiency. So you can consider the uh, computational complexity and the communication complexity of protocols. And you can also consider uh, the number of rounds. Uh, and in uh, many classic results, the, the number of rounds is correlated with the degree of the function uh, to be computed. So uh, our goal in this work is to reduce uh, the number of rounds in a generic way that is independent of the security notion. So uh, the high-level idea is to show uh, a non-interactive reduction from any function to function uh, of uh, degree two. So in, in that way, uh, once we have a protocol that computes uh, this degree two function, we have uh, a protocol that computes any function. Um, OK, so what is a non-interactive reduction? Uh, so let's say we have this function that the parties want to compute. But now we say that instead of communicating with each other, uh, there is some uh, oracle that computes uh, a functionality age. And the only thing that the parties can do is query once this oracle. So now uh, the reduction has a very specific structure. Uh, so in the first step, each party can, to do, can do some local pre-processing over its input. And then they all perform uh, an Oracle query, sender, sending their processed uh, inputs. They all get a response. And eventually, each of them uh, can do post-processing and uh, derive uh, the final output. Um, now, notice when uh, we consider the malicious setting, then the only chance of the parties uh, to deviate from the protocol is in the pre-processing phase. Uh, so that uh, fact will be important for us later. And why uh, uh, this uh, primitive is so strong? Because if we have a non-interactive uh, reduction uh, to a function h, uh, then given any way uh, to compute this uh, functionality h, we then get a, a way to compute uh, f in the same number of rounds. So it can be either a, a protocol that computes h, or a trusted party, or even some uh, physical device. OK, so uh, let's go over uh, some previous results. Uh, so many classic protocols are actually implicitly uh, non-interactive reductions. So for example, uh, Yao's protocol is a non-interactive reduction in the two-party semi-honest setting. Um, and in the multi-party setting, uh, we have reductions uh, to degree three functions. And usually, they, uh, uh, they uh, use uh, something that is called uh, randomized encoding. Um, and then a natural question is uh, whether there is a reduction to the degree two in the multi-party setting. Um, so there were a few uh, breakthrough results in the last year that uh, showed uh, protocols that have only two rounds in the uh, multi-party setting, but they don't show a general reduction. So they uh, face each uh, security notion separately and try to solve uh, uh, the, the problem uh, in, in the independent steps. Uh, and recently in TCC, there were two works that showed an interactive reduction, uh, but only in the semi honest setting. So uh, the natural follow up question is whether there is a such reduction in the multi party setting for a degree two, but uh, with malicious security. 
Uh, and this is uh, the, uh, the question that we solve, and our answer is yes. Um, OK, so we do so by uh, uh, proving a main theorem that uh, we see uh, as our main result. So we call this the master theorem, and it says the following. So if uh, uh, we have a protocol that computes f, we can use it in order to define a non-interactive reduction from f to a function uh, of degree 2. So uh, well, what is nice about this master uh, theorem is that it's not sensitive to the, to the security setting. So it preserves the security guarantee that we had from the protocol that we started from. Um, and uh, the, the price that we have to pay for that is that the, the, the complexity grows exponentially with the depth of the protocol that we started from. Uh, now, you can... Uh, plug in uh, many protocols uh, and apply the master theorem on them, and then as a corollary, uh, you get uh, reductions. Uh, so uh, we get the uh, completeness theorem that says that every function uh, is uh, maliciously reducible to a degree two function, and we can get it either in the information theoretic setting or in the computational setting, uh, and if we do so in the computational uh, setting, then we can save the, the exponential growth. OK, so now, uh, finally, after having this reduction, we can use various protocol to implement the degree 2 function, and then we end up with explicit uh, uh, protocols, and some of them uh, improve known results. So in the last slide, I will uh, give concrete examples. Uh, OK, so now I'm going to give the proof layout of the uh, master uh, theorem, which is the, the main uh, technical part. Um, so. Uh, as I said, uh, uh, most works that show a reduction to degree 3 use something that is called uh, randomized encoding. So they show that uh, if you have a function f, you can compute an encoding of it, and the encoding will be of degree 3. Uh, and our idea is, instead of computing encoding on a function, then we first look at a protocol that computes this function, and then we compute something that is not exactly randomized encoding, but it's inspired by it. But because we know that now our input is not an arbitrary function, but a description of a protocol, then we can exploit it to our benefit and, and, and define the encoding in such a way that now uh, it is of degree 2 instead of degree 3. And also that the reduction has the exactly uh, the same security guarantees of the protocol that is, we started from. And I want to mention that the idea to start uh, with the protocol and reduce its number of rounds is inspired by the works from uh, uh, Les Turocrypt by uh, uh, Ben Hamoud and Lin and uh, uh, Garg and Srinivasan. Um, OK. So now the question is um, how, uh, how uh, uh, we define uh, this encoding in such a way that we can get degree 2 instead of degree 3. Uh, so the first step would be uh, to take uh, the protocol that we start from and describe it as one large circuit. So every uh, local computation that each of the parties do can, can be described by some circuit. And then we glue them together, uh, and I will in a minute show how, and, and we get one large circuit that describes the entire computation that should be done uh, by all parties in the protocol. Uh, so we do so by defining uh, two types of gates. There are local gates that correspond to local computations, and then there are transmission gates uh, that correspond to communication uh, between the parties. Uh, so uh, by defining this structure, uh, we can then associate every wire uh, with one of the parties. So for local computation gates, uh, we associate all of the wires uh, with the party that should perform this computation. And with the switching gates, the input wire uh, is, uh, uh, belongs to the party that sends the message, and the output wire uh, uh, belongs to the receivers of the message. Um, and now the idea that uh, we had the, uh, the work that showed security in the semi-honest setting was that uh, because now uh, uh, every uh, gate has the property that all of its input wires are always associated with a single party, then we can let the, that specific party perform some uh, local pre-processing, and in that way we save one degree. So then we, end, we ended up with degree two instead of uh, degree one. Um, 
Uh, and now the, the problem uh, th that we had to face in, in this work in order to generalize it to malicious security is how to handle uh, parties that uh, cheat in the, in the pre-processing. So a priori, it's not even clear that uh, when they don't do the, the pre-processing honestly, they even end up with something that looks like some sort of uh, randomized encoding. Uh, but what we did in this work is to uh, slightly change the way that the, that the encoding is defined in such a way that um, no matter uh, which uh, malicious uh, strategy they choose for the pre-processing, it ends up uh, uh, looking like changing the local computation that was supposed to be done in that specific gate. So, um, in that way, even uh, if a party uh, uh, sends any arbitrary uh, value instead of performing the pre-processing, we can translate it to a malicious uh, strategy in the protocol that we started from. So we preserve the security guarantees of the, of the protocol that we started from. Um, okay. Uh, so to summarize the results, uh, we have uh, the completeness uh, theorem, which uh, we derive by plugging in uh, protocols. Uh, so, first of all, we get uh, perfect security for threshold uh, n over 3 uh, uh, for uh, functions in NC1. Uh, and we can get uh, statistical uh, security if we want uh, security in the honest majority setting. And if we want to support any function in P, then we have a computational solution, assuming a uh, black box one refunction uh, for any honest majority. Um, and now uh, we can uh, use uh, many different uh, uh, protocols to implement the degree two function, but we give her, uh, we give in the, in the paper a few examples uh, and we derive uh, the following results. Uh, so, as I said in the work from TCC, uh, we have a semi-honest uh, um, protocol for any honest majority in two rounds. Um, and now in this work we uh, have a protocol uh, with malicious security with selective avoid. And the improvement here is now this is for any honest majority. And there is a similar result in the work by uh, Anand Fadal that you will hear about uh, in the next talk. Um, and uh, our next uh, new contribution is, the, is in the uh, guaranteed output uh, delivery um, model. Uh, so there we also improve the threshold to uh, n over 4, and we get the number of rounds uh, to be uh, 3, which is uh, optimal. So for NC1, we have uh, perfect security, uh, and uh, if we want polynomial functions, we can do so assuming uh, one with functions. Um, so yeah, that's it. Uh, 